evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, this evening we'll be in the book of Numbers, chapter 20. Numbers, chapter 20. All right, where we have the story here of um, Israel being led out of Egypt, right? And they're going through uh, Mount Hor, and they needed to go through some land, and they asked permission if they can go through, and they were told, no, you got to go around, right? So this evening I'm looking if, um, and as a Christian, sometimes we think we can take shortcuts, and there's no shortcuts in a Christian life, right? And, and sometimes you might, not, you might be discouraged, or you might see that the way is getting hard, um, on decisions that you have to make or, or obstacles that come our way. But um, let's see how we um, we can be encouraged by God's word. This evening we'll start reading on verse 4, um, Numbers chapter 21, sorry, 21 verse 4. It says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people make, speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul looted this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon the pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass and that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. We're going to stop there this evening. And I said, we're looking that if you are discouraged by, because of the way we as Christians have to go through. But we see um, Israel was on their journey, on their journey to the promised land, right? And, and everybody wants the easy way through um, struggles. But here we see that they were not given permission to go through. Um, so they had to go around, right? And they had to march around Edom, that's the, the, the place that they wanted to go right through with, their, uh, with the amount of people that they were going through, right? But on, on, on our Christian life might be on, on, indeed might be rough and uneven at this time, right? And um, might look ahead and says, you know what, Lord, I have to make decisions and I have to go through this obstacle in life, right? And um, so we're going to learn, um, look at at, 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 at sometimes why we get discouraged, right? And, and then you might figure out, you know what? I'll just as the Israelites, Lord, the Lord say, you know what? Look, on, look up unto me, right? And you pray, and then he leads, leads the way. So let's open up in a, word of, um, in a word of prayer this morning, this evening. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Almighty Father, Lord, we give you thanks once more, Lord, for the blessing of today, Lord, the safety that you have given us to be in your house. Almighty God, with the freedom we have to still preach your words, Lord, we are not being persecuted, Almighty God, and I pray that your message be a blessing to hearts tonight, that we have decisions to make, Lord, and if we're discouraged because of the way, Lord, that we look up to you. Because you have said that you, for every trial and problem that comes our way, Lord, you provide a way out. Almighty God, so I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we see Israel um, going through, and, them, and, and the first thing that the people did when there was trouble in the way uh, was to complain. Was to complain in verse 5, and the people speak against God and against Moses, wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, for there is no bread, neither is there, there any water, and our soul looted this light bread. Right? And the first thing, it, that the, 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 the worst thing that can happen uh, about discouragement is starting to complain. Right? Starting to complain. Um, uh, I read a pastor had said, you know what? A lady came to a pastor and said, you know what? Pastor, I struggle with my tongue. 
right? I want to put my tongue on the altar, and the pastor says, hold on, the altar is not big enough. All right? So, uh, so people start complaining, and, 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 and the worst thing you can do is complain. And sometimes, as Christians, we, we, we complain to unbelievers, right, about what is happening in our church family or in our Christian lives. And, and then, when we go to, to, to present the gospel, it's going to make it even harder, Right, if we don't see how we, we complain to people around, and, 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 and it's easy to complain, right? And that's what the people did. They, they came, they complained about God, they complained about Moses, even though God was providing. God was providing manna out there, right? Manna from heaven, that means, uh, listen, heavenly food. And they yet complained, there's no food out here, right? And, and, and a lot of Christians say, oh, Lord, I want more than I, than I have. But the Lord is providing all our needs, right? All our needs, and when decisions come that we need to make, as, as you, are, you have prayed about, right, about the provision, how much more you can give for the Lord, right? You might say, oh, but I have this, this I, need to, I need to pay this, and I need to, um, as Pastor said, is, is don't take of what you need, but of what you have extra, right? And you say, you know, Lord, what um, you have provided, you have provided our needs, Right? And, 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 and they wanted, they know they were going to a promised land. They know the land was theirs. The, everything they needed to do was get there. And because of their disobedience, they ended up marching for 40 years. Right? When it could have been an easy way through to the promised land. So as Christians that we are, listen, our, our life, we will spend going up and down, up and down. We will have battles in our lives. We will have people complain, complain about us, complain to us, right? And the first thing you can say if you're a good Christian, I don't want to hear it, right? You, ha you have a problem with somebody, go and talk to them. Go and bring it up to them, right? And if they don't hear or they are disobeying, they don't want to turn from their disobedience, then you, the Bible says two of you go approach them. Right? Or bring it to the church. But here we see that they, they came to, 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 to Moses and they started complaining about God, that God is not providing. And they survived for 40 years. Right? 40 years out there, God fed them. When they complained of water, God told Moses, listen, look, look at that rock. Hit the rock with your staff and they'll get water. Right? They, get, they get water, and they had water, they had food, right? And, but they called, what did they call the manna from heaven? This light bread. This light bread. They were being fed. But they wanted what they desired, not what they needed. Right? And sometimes in our spiritual life we're being fed. A lot of people say, but it's not good food. Hey, every time we come to church... We must be fed spiritually. Something must, we must learn from every sermon, every, every Sunday school lesson. We must be fed. Right? Don't, don't complain, Lord, this is light bread. Right? The Lord is giving us what we need. Right? Giving us pastors, preachers, evangelists that come by. He has, he's providing spiritual food. Right? And, 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 and we are in this wilderness. We live on, on this, in this wild world. Right? And, and we must see where he is leading us. We know that we have a promised land. We have, we, be, we, we have heaven promised to us. You, have you been saved? You, you, we're heading to heaven. Israel was heading to the promised land. And they complained on their way going. We're Christians. We're heading to heaven. Are we going to complain like Israel? Or are we going to give thanks to the Lord for providing our needs? And if you notice, he provides every single need that we have. Right? No matter what. No matter what that need is, if, if God knows that you need it, not what you want, not what I want. Right? I always tell my church, if God will say, Pastor Blanco, what do you want? We'll say, you know what? I, have a, I want a huge building with brand new vehicles, buses, and no. God says, this is what you need. This is what you're going to have. Right? And, 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 and we must be grateful for the provision that God gives us. Right? And, and a lot of Christians complain about the provision they have. They might look and say, Lord, but look at that family. They have more than we have. But you know what? God says, look at those that don't have. Look at those that don't have. I am providing for your need. Right? So why complain? Why complain? And, and, it's, and, and a lot of people say, Lord, I don't have enough money. 
I don't have the perfect job. Listen, there's no such thing as the perfect job. If you're a Christian and you work in the world, there's no perfect job. They will complain. They, 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 they will call you names, right? And, and when you go to, 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 to present that gospel, they will re reject it. They will reject it, and, and some of them are upfront. I don't want to hear anything about it, right? Young people nowadays, they, 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 they will be out up front whenever you are, you, are, you are presenting the gospel. And sometimes it's discouraging. Discouraging when you see, you know what? You present the gospel, you know they're heading to hell. And they reject it over and over, right? And, 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 and you can hear stories of churches that have been two years, nobody have gotten saved. In Belize, we have been two, three months without somebody getting saved. And you know what? We pray. I say, listen, you just pray. You pray the Lord here pray, prayers, and soon as our anniversary Sunday came, every week we have had somebody come forward and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But we must be faithful to the Lord. Amen. Right? We must be faithful. God promised them that land. And as soon as problem came, they blame God. And they blame the leaders they had. They blame Moses. And they blame Aaron, they, they, they both brothers. Instead of saying, Lord, you gave us a leader that, that, that will show us the way there. Right? And they complain. And the first thing that they did was complain. Secondly, well, God said you are complaining, then there's consequences. Consequences. Look at verse, uh, um, well, Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. Right? And in verse 6, they go back and they said, you know what? Uh, and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they were bit, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. And sometimes we complain and we are discontented, right? And, and, and God will bring consequences, just as we have consequences for our sins, right? And, and, and a lot of people say, but I don't see the consequences. The, the, the un, unsaved people that don't have consequences, they do have. Even Christians that sin, we have consequences for our sins as well, right? And, and, and those consequences, God knows what they are and he's going <laughs> to take care of us. Right? He will give us that, those consequences. He, and, and Israel, he sent those fiery uh, serpents. And, they, and, and, and the Bible says that a lot of them died. Died. Why? They didn't want it to look at the fiery serpent that they was raised up above. Just as Jesus said, the Son of Man will be crucified up. And everybody who looked at him shall be saved. Right? And, and, and they were bitten. Right? And... and, and, and and they, a lot of them died. But when they realize that when they were bitten and they look at this fiery serpent of brass, they were healed. They were healed. So they turn. Isn't that amazing? When people realize that they are lost and they're going to hell, but if they look up to Jesus Christ, he saves them. He saved me. He saved us. Amen. Right? And, 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 and that because of that, that, he died for us. But a lot of people... Let their pride lift them up against God. You know that a lot of people that, that would come to church know they are sinners. Know they, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. But when the invitation is done to come forward and accept him as their Lord and Savior, pride is what holds them back. Pride holds them back in their heart. That five-letter word, so small, but so powerful that holds a soul from accepting Jesus Christ. And sometimes it's, and they, they pride that they don't want to see their, they don't want their friends see them, that they are Christians or, or their family members to know that they are Christians. All right? So we, we must continue and we will get discouraged. We'll dis get discouraged in, in this journey we have. Right? And, 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 but every time we get discouraged, we remember that we have somebody, we have Jesus Christ to look after, to look at. We look at him and he leads the way. Right? And he leads the way and he gives us, gives us a way out of every trial. Right? Every trial. Probably you're, you're, you're having a, a, a situation right now in your life and, and you're struggling and you're being discouraged. Right? A lot of people um, are discouraged about continuing, continuing in a church. Right? We have, it's, it's not only here, even in Belize. A young lady stopped coming because another young lady stopped talking to her. Hey, she doesn't look on my ways, and so I'm not going to church. 
and, and, and ladies that don't want to come to church, well, oh, the kids make too much noise in the bus, so I'm not coming back to church. Those are excuses that they're doing, those are complaining that they're doing to God. He said, listen, we, if we didn't have a bus, they won't be able to get to church. Right? So they said, when we go out and say, if you provide a vehicle, we'll come to church. The moment the kids start playing and making noise in the bus, they complain about the bus. But before, they didn't have a transportation to come to church. Now when we provide, then it's the kids. And if the kids, then they will find something else. Some like us Christians, we find something, something small to complain about. Something small, right? And, and then we just make it big. And sometimes everything we need to do, spend some time in prayer, look up to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, show me the way. Show me the way out of this one. Right? There's nothing big that the Lord will not give us a way out. But a lot of us want our flesh to show us the way out. And we always, our flesh will lead us the wrong way out. And that's what Israel wanted. They wanted to go through Edom. They said no. And they said, walk again. Probably it was going to have to go through mountains. This was the straight, nice way through. But I have to go through the mountains. Right? And, and, and that's what they, they look at the journey. Right? And, and, but as soon as they realized that they were being punished by God, they repented and they confessed their sin. Look at verse 7, seven there. It says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, we are sinned for, we, sorry, we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. They realized that they have sinned, not only against Moses, but against God first. Isn't that a reminder what Joseph said when he ran from Potiphar's wife? I'm going to sin against God. Not against her, but he was going to sin against his God. And every time we sin, because of disobedience or whatever sin it is, we sin against God. Right. We, know, we, we might offend somebody, but we offend God first. And that's what Israel realized. That, you know what, we sin against God, Moses, and we spoke again, um, bad about you as well. Right? Remember when he, when he went to receive the Ten, ten Commandments? They said, Aaron, Moses is not coming back. Make us a God that we can worship. Every time they find an excuse, and God is so merciful that he forgave them every time. Right? And, and that's amazing. If you are discouraged, spend time in prayer, confess your faults, and then make your request to the Lord. Lord, I have sinned against you. And then against my brother or against whosoever you have offended. Right? Don't be discouraged. Right? And, 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 and discouragement Listen, even gets to pastors. Sometimes there's trouble at church. And my wife said, why don't you just let them have the church and we go out? No. I said, no. God has called us to lead that church. Yeah. We're going to go through a through, through lot of troubles, a lot of trials. But it's God's word that we're doing. We, we're not pleasing anybody. We're pleasing the Lord. Right? And trouble will come. Trouble will come. Right? But if you have decided, Lord, I'm going to give this for, for missions. You know what the devil will do? As soon as you write that number and you give it to the Lord, something will come in your life that you will need that financing for. Because he is going to you say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try as best as possible because I don't want God's word to go out there. He's going to fight it. He's going to fight it. But if we have faith in the Lord and we know that that promise that we are making, he's going to provide all our needs. No matter what the enemy brings, he's going to give us what we need to be able to support this church and missionaries doing his work out there as well. Right? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Right? And, and, and if you have been discouraged or are, if you are discouraged, hey, look up to Jesus Christ. Take that discouragement. Take that trial, that trouble to him. Right? And he says, listen, here I am. Here I am. Right? And he will lead you and give you a way out. Right? So, um, and, and confession, when you have offended somebody, is really hard. Really hard to go and, and, and face that person and say, sorry, I offended you. It's, it's hard. But you know what? It's humbling when you do it. When you do it, you gain a brother and you gain a sister in Christ. Because we are not all perfect. We are not all perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll make mistakes. 
But the Lord says, take responsibility of your mistake. And you continue forward in your Christian life. Right, so the challenge I have tonight, the challenge I have tonight, uh, for you tonight, have, are you discouraged? Or have you been discouraged? Or are you struggling with, with, with a situation in your spiritual life? Right? Or, 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 or you think somebody's speaking something about you. You say, Lord, I heard rumors. Hey, I don't want rumors. Right? You say, Lord, I'm going to put it in your hand. I'm going to pray. Right? And, 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 and whatever it is that you, you want me to do. Right? Most, uh, uh, um, Moses, God told him, make that serpent. Put it up on the staff. And whosoever look up to that servant will be, serpent will be healed. You have, a, you, you have a discouragement in your spiritual life. Look up to Jesus Christ. He didn't went on that cross for nothing. He sacrificed everything for us. Right? And, 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 and he, once he sacrificed everything for us, he's right there. Because he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Right? So we must go forward in this Christian life. And if you're um, shy not knowing what to do, the Lord said, open thy mouth and I will feel it. So he will give you the words you need to be able to continue on your Christian life. So it's a challenge. I know it's a challenge and it's hard when, when we have, it's hard especially when you become discouraged, right? And, and, and that discouragement might be so small that, that and you know what this, our, our mind does? Something small happens and we're thinking the worst, right? And sometimes it's something so small that if you just talk about it, then you're like, oh, it wasn't that, that bad after all. Right? If, and that lady in the bus, the, everything she should have done, take, it, take that child and say, shh. And she take over. She's the older one in the bus. Right? And, and, he, if, and then he will obey her, and then she had a nice, can have a nice ride to church. But it's just something she needed to stop coming to church. Is there something that is pushing you not to come to church? You know what? That's the, that's the enemy having it right there on your heart. Nagging it, nagging it, nagging it until it gets you. Don't, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Push forward for the Lord. Right here in, in your community. Right? Push forward. You say, you know what? I'm going. I'm going. Even though they might not like me, they might, they might say, don't come in my yard. Well, I'll go around. Edom says, don't go through. Then Moses says, we'll go around. They might not want you in that block. Go around to the next block. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. And that's the, 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 the message this evening. Don't be discouraged because of the way. We will face obstacles. Right? And God gives us the leader we need. You have a good pastor. You have a good church. You have a good community to reach out. And you have good missionaries that you can support doing what God has sent them out there to do. But make that commitment. Be encouraged that God will provide your need. All right? Don't let that discouragement hold you back in doing what God wants us to do as Christians. Spread the gospel to every creature out there. Let's, let, let's um, bow our heads in prayer this evening. Almighty Father, Lord, we give you thanks for your words. Lord, I pray it's an encouragement. Almighty God, as we go through trials and discouragement, Almighty God, and even us pastors, Lord, we have some times that we think that burdens are too big. Lord, but we learn to lay our burdens on your shoulder, Lord, we knowing that you um, called us to lead. Lord, and I pray that, that, that your people, Almighty God, will support those that have been called those that have, that have been sent, Almighty God, and that they, they will not allow that discouragement to, to stop them from serving you and for being and assembling as one body, Lord, as the church that you want this church to be, Almighty God, strong spiritually, strong as a family as well, where we care for one another and to help one another, Lord, to go through that discouragement that we might have or that anybody might have, Lord, and that you provide a way that we can continue serving you as you want us to, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.